Hey everybody, it's Sandra Lett, and look, I'm wearing my fan crown. <laughs> I'm in my mech of a house studio, but today I'm doing a counterculture DIY artist resin video for you because it's my all-time favorite resin to use. I'm going to be using the medium viscosity, which is the green and yellow label, equal parts A and B. I'm going to probably mix up about 18 ounces of resin and I am going to do a large round mold. And if you don't have this mold, just do one that you have the size of. Uh, this is a kind of an extra large one and it might be about 14 inches or so, but you can do a 10 inch one and you can create your own masterpiece with what you have available. Okay? The next part of the video will be down on my table showing you what I'm doing. All right, here we go. Okay, so I've mixed for six minutes. I'm going to switch over to a stopwatch and start that and just keep an eye on my time. I don't like to uh, get too far gone because then your resin won't do what you want it to do. So I've got that mixed. I'm going to pull it aside. Got my masking tape just to pick up any spare glitter mica whatever's fluttered around fur hair dust first thing we're going to do though is check to make sure we're level we are so that's a good thing because you don't want your stuff shifting we've got some crushed glass here i used the crystallines what i had left in a bag of that which is the clear and then i had some blue crushed glass just from the local store and so I'm going to use a combination of the two and just quickly put a border around my mold. I'm going to be using the Mica Aquarius and uh, I'm going to use the Glitter Posh Periwinkle. I'm going to put some clear in that and put it around on the edge. I've got this beautiful pearl shimmer which has a blue violet um, cast to it. I'm going to add maybe a little bit of epoxy white armor art. And um, I didn't have any counterculture silver mica, but this is Quicksilver by Funshine Color Shop. And this is counterculture blue sapphire dispersion color. And I may throw in a little bit of Majestic Mauve or a little Bombay ink to adjust the color. I'm not sure yet. Um, I just kind of want to see how things look and then I'll decide. So I'm going to split up my resin and I ended up mixing 16 ounces. This is the Posh Periwinkle. This is the Aquarius mica. Okay, that was a turquoise Bombay ink. The deep color is blue sapphire, intense color, dispersion color here. I put just a tiny bit of the majestic mob, like a drop, and then I added to make it a little cooler, red violet. 
And then I've got some mica chips here that I've kind of taken apart with my fingers and they're ready to kind of go. So what we're going to do first is start with the clear glitter that has the posh periwinkle. Make sure I get up right to the edge. So this doesn't have to be perfect because you're going to be adding layers upon layers anyway, so it doesn't really matter about, you don't have to worry about perfection at all. I'm just going to start layering in the colors then. I am done. The, what it does is it just kind of does itself and it has a mind of its own and you just let it work its magic. Um, I had to move that coaster over here because it was more level on this side. The paper's buckled so it was making that shift. So You can also use a low temp heat gun. So both of these, this is the Geo 3 mold from Counterculture. They both hold about two ounces of uh, resin. They might be a little shy of two ounces. Um, so that means I used about 12 ounces in this large mold. And it's not filled to the top, but I don't want it because I'm going to probably make it into a bowl shape. Maybe not. I might just leave it flat as a tray. The main thing is it goes to all the edges to make sure all the uh, crystals are covered with some, you know, form of resin. I've got a little of the glittery and all the different colors. And you want, you really kind of want some of those. I like it more clear on the outside just to kind of let some of those crystals really show through on the edge. The, the resin has been mixed for over 40 minutes now. So I'm not going to mess with it anymore because I don't want it to get tacky and when it gets tacky it will stick to you. So I, it's about the right working time. Now if you were doing like a 3D flower bloom, you would have waited till about 25 minutes or so to really put your colors into the clear resin, which was in a previous video of mine. If you want to look that up on the channel, you can also find that one where I made some 3D flower uh, bloom looking coasters. There's a certain timing that you want to kind of wait and let your resin kind of warm up. So that's really important then. But for this, you can go ahead and start just putting in your colors because they all are going to go towards the middle and create what they're going to create. And you kind of let nature take its course on this one. So it's a relatively simple thing to do as a beginning resin artist. You just have to have all your little cups with the pigments and all ready to go. 
and you've got to work pretty quickly. You can't dilly-dally around because if you do, your resin will heat up and turn to plastic before you can get everything done. So you've got to really be prepared and have all your mica pieces ready, your glass pieces ready, your colors all ready to go in the containers if it's not like a wet pigment. You can put your powders in the cups, you can put glitters in cups, and just have it ready to go. So. I hope you enjoyed this and I will show you the unmolding and the finished pictures at the end. One other thing is I, I take 91% alcohol and I spritz before I cover it. That just helps remove any surface bubbles. And I use a food net to cover your resin. And uh, this is great for dust and things like that that you don't want getting into your pieces. So I just cover it up with a food net and let it sit and I'll check it in about six hours. Okay, I'm back about six hours or so later. I had a little leftover resin and so I used the uh, cute little angel wing mold for earrings. So I have a lot of earring molds around that I keep just to put extra resin in. And it's not quite enough for a coaster or something like that. So look at those cute little feather. And they're etched, but I don't know if you can tell, see? And then they have, you know, they're pretty on either side. And, you know, this was the rest of the leftover resin that I used to go ahead and make coasters with. This is one habit I make sure I do is I take everything off and I put it on parchment paper because absolutely nothing will stick to parch parchment paper. So I love to use it because you can clean it off and it, you know, it's nice and smooth. So, ooh, look at that. Isn't that pretty? So I had no clue what to expect uh, with the colors. I just kind of expected it to look this way on both sides. So two different effects. You know, usually with coasters, I like to have the reverse uh, option anyway. And sometimes I like to be able to see the sides, but with this, I might would do them silver because there's silver in the, uh, the mica flakes. And I use liquid chrome, which is a paint pen. It's oil based and it's fabulous. It, it is the shiniest silver out there in the market that I know of. All right. So let's see what this one looks like. I waited longer uh, than I probably should have if I wanted to form it into a bowl. It's still flexible because it's so large. Look at that. Look at the glitter. That is so, so pretty. Now. It's really pretty on both sides. This side has the glass edge and it's kind of lumpy, as you can see, the raised areas. And if I lay it down on this side, it's totally smooth. And so vivid. Make sure that it's totally on parchment paper. I don't want anything stick it, sticking to it. So that is gorgeous. That was a, a pleasant surprise. I really had no idea what to expect. So that is so beautiful. I am going to let it lay this way, which is the way I poured it into the mold, 
just so that it sets up firmly. Now I could heat it and put it inside of like a plastic bowl and form it into something, but I think this is just way too pretty to do that with. I think I'm just going to leave it as a tray. It is just so gorgeous. So, the coasters could go with it. Or they can be separate. And, of course, the earrings, you know. <laughs> so, I hope you learned something on this video. I hope it was informational for you and uh, that you don't um, get nervous about creating something that's totally unique like this. The key is you just got to go for it and you got to work quickly and you can't drag your feet and you have 25 to 30 minutes to really work well with the resin and then your time is pretty much up before it really starts setting in. I absolutely love that um, mica that I used. The, the, the pearl shimmer is an iridescent white, but it has a blue-violet cast. And the, uh, the other um, mica is just stunning. That is just such a pleasant surprise. I love good surprises. I don't know now about y'all. That's in the light, but anyway. I will post photographs, and I'll take pictures outside and put them at the end of the video as well. So thank you so much, and I hope you enjoyed it. Bye-bye.